today's video, I'm gonna talk about some things to know if you are going to decide to run a front lip on your car. So the reason why I'm talking about this again is because I actually hit something with my front lip. Uh, I was driving on the freeway and a piece of the road actually flew up after somebody drove over it and hit my front lip. Um, unfortunately, it cracked the front lip, so I'll show you an image of that. But uh, if the front lip wasn't there, it actually would have been hit on the whole front bumper. So I'm actually glad that this hit. But things to note when you're deciding to do a front lip is that your car is going to be lower even though the rest of the car is not lower. This adds another inch, about an inch, to the um, lower front end. So you have to be careful with a lot of things. So things to know if you do decide to run this is if you want to protect it. So here I have some things here. Um, this is called Slip Low. Um, this is the name brand version, but I've seen that um, Amazon has kind of come up with some newer, cheaper alternatives. Um, I can't tell if it's good quality or if it's the same. It might be the same, but um, that's up to you to decide. But um, this shouldn't take any drilling. This is just a 3M adhesive that you stick onto the bottom. Um, and it gives an extra hard uh, plastic to scrape underneath um, if the clearance is too low. Um, I had this on my lip already and I, it saved me a lot, um, usually around this area when I'm trying to back in somewhere or drive into a steep uh, driveway. So this has saved me a lot. I would highly recommend this, whether or not you're even running a lip or if it's just on your front bumper, do run this on your car. Another thing to note is when I installed my lip, I did not put any paint protection film on it. Um, and because that piece is so low to the ground, regardless of how fast or how slow you're going, there's gonna be rocks um, flying up that are really low to the ground. So that whole front end of that front lip pretty much just got covered in small little rock chips that kind of took away from the paint and the, the uh, clear coat and stuff that makes it look just shiny. So I would highly recommend getting um, a small roll of 3M uh, paint protection film. I just bought this off of Amazon. Um, it's pretty easy to apply um, and I'll show you how to apply that here in a little bit. Another thing that you can do instead of the paint protection film, if you're feeling like it's um, a little too daunting, is you can get a all scratch uh, touch up paint. Um, this is just from AutoZone. This is a black touch up paint um, and you can just kind of dab it. And then this also comes with a clear coat on the bottom end. So um, it comes with the paint color and then the clear coat, which is, um, you know, pretty good. Um, this is just a universal black, but at AutoZone, they carry a couple different versions where it actually says, says the brand of the car and the color code. So you might be able to find your exact color. Um, and one final thing I wanna touch on is the actual composition of the lip. On my Miata, it is a soft plastic, so um, it's a little bit more malleable and it can kind of take hits a little bit better than a harder plastic would like this or even carbon fiber. So there's a couple different versions that you can go with. You can go with that soft plastic. You can go with this kind of harder plastic, pretty much the same material as the trunk lip on top and a carbon fiber piece. So there's basically three tiers, but there's big jumps between them. So that plastic, soft plastic is probably $60. This is probably sitting at 120. And then the carbon fiber can go up to a thousand or to three thousand so things to consider is that if you are running these there's a chance that you're going to crack it and that's what happened to me and that's something that i actually mentioned in my last video talking about front lips is if i did hit something um, i didn't want to pay three thousand for a new carbon fiber piece or 1500 whatever the price is it's a lot more than just this piece so um, in my mind, I don't want to pay for a carbon fiber piece that's so low to the ground that's going to take so much damage, where it also pretty much weighs the same. This is pretty lightweight. This isn't a solid plastic. This is um, hollow, um, but it does the same job as the front lip would, um, and it doesn't weigh hardly anything. It's probably two or three pounds. So um, run that at your own risk. Um, I obviously prefer this gloss black 
Um, this is just bought from eBay and they do a pretty good job at making this look like the CS, uh, M2CS front lip. So um, a lot of eBay stores are selling these gloss black. Do not get the carbon fiber style um, front lips where they do a hydro dip because especially with pieces like this, it kind of warps with the water so it doesn't look real it doesn't look good just get the carbon or just get the gloss black uh, version of this front lip um, in my opinion um, if you want to pay for that carbon fiber piece just to kind of show that off you can if you want but just keep in mind that it could get damaged and it probably will get damaged whether it's from a hard hit or from rock chips so do whatever you can to protect what you love so um, i'm going to start doing this and then we'll get back to where we're at so um, another thing to know is obviously it's going to be cheaper so the quality is not going to be perfect. Um, my last lip actually was really good. Um, this one is a little iffy. Um, there's some spots where the paint uh, didn't get covered right here, um, but it's really small. But I am going to touch it up with that paint over there um, just so that the water doesn't get in there. Um, but on the bottom half, it has these drill holes that are exactly where there are some plastic rivets in the front end of the BMW. So you shouldn't have to drill um, new holes or anything strange. So um, if you do, it also comes with some uh, double-sided tape to uh, apply to that. But let's put this slip low on um, and I'll kind of show you how I rearrange or how I arrange the uh, pieces. So this is just a uh, basically a automotive adhesive primer. Let me put some gloves on. This will make sure that the uh, 3M tape kind of on the back of these kind of stick to the uh, lip. So I'm just gonna wipe this everywhere where I think it's gonna be. It comes with two, so you should have a lot. You wanna let it get all over and then let it dry. Don't apply it while it's still wet. Um, so let's see, all around here. Um, a tip I would say is, I would use a majority of this slip low in the furthest reaching areas, kind of like in this area of the front lip. Um, the corner maybe, but mostly in this area. That's where I had the most issues um, where it would scrape or kind of drag against the ground. So I'm gonna save that. And with these kind of, uh, I guess, grooves, is it will let you kind of flex with the shape of the lip or with a lot of different things here. So um, you do wanna have this side facing out. So keep that in mind. So we can go like this and go like this. I'm gonna mock it up, kind of see how I want that. I would say just lightly kind of stick it there first and then push down so that you know and line it up well with how you want it. So now I'm just kind of going by with the heat gun just to like kind of not melt the plastic but warm up the adhesive underneath so that it sticks really well to the front lip and it doesn't come off in this cold weather. Um, I never had any issues so this is more of just a precaution. Pretty hard plastic. So if that gives you a little bit of an example of how hard that plastic is. I'm just gonna stick one right in the dead center. Which 
just so it looks a little uniform because you will see it a little bit from the top but if you're not paying attention you should be okay so what you want to do is get the uh, the paint code that you have and you put this on which is the paint color brush it on let it dry for 30 minutes um, or until you feel like it's really really dry and then apply the clear coat uh, which is the bottom half kind of like a sponge so I just have some gloves on and then we're just gonna paint it it's basically like nail polish I don't know if you got to see that, but that pretty much just covered it perfectly. Um, right now it's still wet, so I'm gonna let that dry and then I'll put the clear coat on there. We'll go in with another coat of actually the black just to add some extra. It's right here. Um, obviously, the more layers you put, the more protection it's going to have, but that is kind of just a small little thing. I'm not too worried about it, so um, I just kind of did it quick. I painted it, did my uh, heat gun to dry it off a little bit quicker, and then I put the clear coat on there. So, um, And another point is that this is going to be basically underneath um, because the bumper is right here. Um, the only reason why I'm doing that is just so that water doesn't get in there and then pulls up the paint from normal weather so uh, hopefully this will hold it heavy coat on there. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to break it off into sections for this paint protection because um, there's a lot of curves here. There's actually only the front section right here that I want to cover. So I'm going to break it off right here and then right here. And we'll see how well I do. Um, I'm not a pro. So hopefully this will give you some idea of how easy or difficult it can be or will be. What you can do is do a negative, which would mean uh, kind of mocking it up and then coloring the back. Almost like when you were a kid, you would color um, like fossils or something. I don't know, I'm from Utah, so we have dinosaur stuff like this, but you can actually color the back and get basically a negative, and then you can trim that out. So I'm gonna do that. basically drawing from one side of that curve so the pencil falls off at some point and you can kind of see where that goes so you can kind of see the shape of that so then you can take it off and follow where that goes there so now you have it in a straight line you're just going to want to trim in that general area the shape of it Again, this is just for preventative measures, so it doesn't have to be perfect, and you can always trim it a little bit later. So I got to about right here. What I do here is I actually use water to fill in the gap. Um, you can use water, you don't have to, but with water, you get a little bit of a safety net when you're kind of squeegeeing 
And if you don't position it correctly, um, you kind of have like a buffer. So that'll save you a little bit if you don't like the placement of it at all. So I'll kind of show you what I do here. I actually just puncture. You can use soapy water. I'm just gonna use water with what I can here. Just to let it on there. I'm then gonna put it on top because I'm gonna be squeegeeing. Keep my fingers a little bit wet. And then I'm just gonna take this off if I can. As you pull down, just get that on there. I'm kind of having to deal with this curling on itself. A good tip is a day or two before, kind of lay it out flat in warm weather because they ship it kind of like this, all spun up. So it ends up being a little hard to work with, so. so this. It is pretty sticky still, but. I'm gonna trim off the excess sections where it kinda comes up or comes off on the bottom. bubbles that I can see. I'm actually going to add some soap because it's still a little too sticky, but it will evaporate. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of fold it down on itself a little bit so it goes underneath. So I'm going to cut here. So I just did this front part on film, just so you can see. Um, I would highly suggest putting soap in this. Um, I normally do, but for some reason I just didn't. Um, but it kind of helps with keeping it slick and sliding around. So we'll see what happens. Um, I'm gonna let this dry out and see if that's water bubbles. If it's not water bubbles, then I will just redo that. Um, but it will save it from those rock chips. So I'm gonna cover up this part. Anything that's exposed, um, I'm gonna cover up um, because there's a lot of rock chips on the other one. But hopefully this gives you an idea if you're looking to buy a front lip for your car, um, things to think about when you're actually considering the material or the uh, covering paint, et cetera, or the composition of it all. So hopefully this helps you out and I'll see you in the next video.